All right, hey everybody. Um, so uh, we're gonna get started here. Thanks for a couple of minute wait here. We got a lot of tech stuff to turn on for these things, and so um, we're gonna dive right into it. But uh, welcome everybody. If you're here live or if you're watching the replay, I'm wearing my Bitcoin hat today because a nice big rally in Bitcoin this morning. We will dive into that shortly. And um, you know, in my private group here, I was calling for it's time to get back in. Uh, that was last week, and so we were exiting or sorry entering. A couple of coins that we talked about in the M3 Active Trader class. That um, if you're not a part of that, you can learn more about that over at uh, Moonstream.io. If uh, they've got a million screens open here, and uh, learn more about that. So we were so basically we're seeing this continuation of this uptrending pattern here. And um, this class M3 Active Trader, we talk about that uh, in a little more detail. But um, let's get into the news, and I'll just show you the charts actually to show you what we're looking at, and we'll get into why. And um, nice big candle here. Lots of um, different uh, opinions on why we've gone higher. It's not really clear, but uh, our signals and what we're here mostly to talk about today are our crypto mastery signals. And we're going to unpack some news, but most of all, here for a partial training on how to use these signals here for the crypto mastery. So we have a double rocket, you guys. So we don't see this very often. This is one of our strongest signals. This candle pattern here is called the rocket on the launch pad. We had one four days ago, and that led me to send out buy alerts on Bitcoin and a few other coins, and uh, along with our early reversal indicators. So what we're gonna talk about today is alignment and confluence and how powerful that can be. And just from good old fashioned TA, if you're familiar with the bullish engulfing candle, where you have a big green candle that engulfs the last one, well, essentially we have that here with the last three candles now being engulfed by today's. So we're gonna watch really carefully how the day closes end of today. If it sells off a bit, it's still bullish as long as we can hold above 60K. That is our line in the sand because right now, and what was challenging before is we had gotten below the 21 day, this yellowish, orangish line, the 50 day exponential moving average, the green one, and this black line, which is the uh, 200 day exponential moving average. So um, to get above that is very bullish. And so we are, uh, it's looking pretty good. Um, a little bit overbought here on some of our other signals, but still bullish. Um, we'll come back, we'll get to this and look at it in other time frames. But um, so these lines here that I draw are sometimes uh, are often prophetic, even if I have to move them around a bit so maybe it's going to be more like this which is more in line with uh, what i would think we have to still clear that 72k 73k level to um fully be bullish on this market because there's a lot of sell pressure up in here which we can see from our well i guess we don't isn't this interesting uh, we had heavy heavy sell block pressure up above that seems to have been erased here so i tell you what let me just double check that on the total market cap because that's usually where we're going to see it the, the strongest and yeah there it is okay so we still have lots of sell pressure up in these ranges we'll get to that after the news i'm just kind of circling the wagons and uh, we'll talk about um, some of these other coins and studies that we've been uh, following here so let's come back to that and dive into some news so um, this uh, article here is saying Bitcoin poised for volatility ahead of the U.S. interest rate decision. Of course, the FOMC meeting tomorrow. And now we're leaning toward more more toward a half rate cut. And whereas it's gone back and forth. Originally, it was <clears throat> showing up as a, as a 30, 40 percent chance of a half rate uh, cut. And then it went back to 25 as the um, the major the much higher percentage. And now it's back up in that uh, the, looking at 50 range and so if we pull that up real quick on the FOMC FedWatch tool we can see that uh, we talk about this a little bit more on the the MacArthur sorry the M3 active trader class tomorrow I've got a lot of uh, acronyms and things we're watching but here so this is flip-flopped last week in the last few weeks there was a much higher percentage of a quarter basis point rate cut and now we're seeing 63 percent so this is um, bullish in the short term um, I will caution everybody that typically, well, it's tricky because in the past, when we've seen half rate uh, cuts in a recessionary environment, it's been bearish. Question is, are we in a recession or not? And uh, so we will look at some other clues on this chart. But right now, I have never seen a double rocket like that before at the same level. And so uh, this... Um, 
it is very interesting to me. And I think that uh, we've put in a bottom and we're putting in a higher low. All right. So I keep teasing you with some news, but pay attention to this. This could be big. All right. <clears throat> Coming back over into the uh, news side of things. And uh, I welcome some new people just joining in. And so as far as the what's likely to happen here, um, you know, volatility, certainly uh, this could be a sell the news event. If we pump hard into tomorrow and, um, you know, we do get that half rate to cut half point rate cut, you know, likely we'll see some selling, but it's OK as long as we're putting in higher lows. And so this saying as I was just saying, the first interest rate cut since the pandemic, a lot of, um, you know, bullish things could come out of this. Um, you know, again, I'm hesitating because in the in the history in the past, after rate cuts began, prices pull back down before they go higher. But is this time different? I don't know. We have today, and I'll get to this next. We're having the first inflows of money into the IBIT uh, for some time, for a couple of days at least, which is uh, significant. And we'll pull up my um, my other study that we've been following on the IBIT, which has been uh, very accurate in predicting forecasting price. So um, a couple other things here are Bitcoin traders saying it's too early. Um, I, I rely on my own analysis, but I like to hear what other people are saying, especially when there's some consensus and the consensus is generally wrong. So that's OK. And I want to kind of keep an eye out on what other people are saying, but uh, not to go too far down the rabbit hole. See, Bitcoin price action, tough to call after the Fed rate decision. That's kind of what I was saying. And and back to the thesis of this article here, expect volatility. I think overall we're in good shape, but there is still a an outlier of a further breakdown into the forty thousand dollar range. So we're definitely not out of the woods, and uh, we've been talking about some of that in our, our M three class on Wednesdays. So uh, let's see downside pressure ahead of the uh, the Fed interest rate um, uh, meeting. So after losing sixty k. So this person saying we could lose more pressure, but now we're above 60K. So here we have this uh, money flowing back in. Michael Saylor posting this morning a meme of, uh, I think, of Bitcoin running. So um, that has um, maybe gotten some people excited. He's buying more. And um, yeah, so uh, getting closer and closer to, to meeting him, by the way, hopefully one day, uh, but mutual friends of his here in Washington, D.C. So the incoming decision on this uh, could introduce more volatility for Bitcoin, depending which way it goes. We pretty much know which way it's going to go, not with 100 percent certainty, but 63 percent certainty right here. And, um, you know, so it's still uncertain. It's not like in the movie Billions where uh, Bob Axelrod says to his team, he's like, are you certain? And when they have inside information, they say, I am not uncertain. Well, this is uncertain. Uh, if it's up above 80 percent, you know, pretty much can rely on it is. Uh, but we don't know yet. So um, what's going to be interesting, uh, let's see what happens tomorrow. I'm surprised to see this movement before the FOMC, um, because usually people wait for the announcement. But uh, at any rate, uh, so they're saying, as I was suggesting, depending on whether the rate cut is 25 basis points or 50, market behavior could swing between bullish optimism and cautious de-risking in response to major macroeconomic adjustments, right? Because if we come out and do a half basis point cut, it means they've broken the economy and they're worried. And uh, so, you know, and they're they're realizing they to, they're trying to have a soft landing with this, but it does mean that things are broken in other areas. OK, so um, and this expected volatility could be reflected in inflows across ETFs, which we're seeing today. And um, but, you know, these are now Wall Street products that will trade up and down and take profits just like everything else. And a lot of it, if not all of it, is programmatically driven. So it's hard to react uh, in real time. Let's see. Uh, Bitcoin price struggles as bears overtake the bulls in futures markets. Uh, let's see. Um, we were not quite seeing that yet. I'll open that up just to see when the time of that article is, uh, which is sort of uh, that was September 11th. So it's pointless. Always check the dates on these articles because you can get thrown a curveball if you're reading news that's a week old or even a day old. All right, let's see. More analysts uh, increasingly calling for Bitcoin breakout in October. Um, yeah, I mean, <clears throat> September generally a down month. So that also begs the question, is this rally to be believed? Uh, even if it chops around a bit, as long as we're putting in those higher lows, because we just had a double bottom and around that 54K range. And uh, we, we nailed that, by the way. I was putting out buy limit order recommendations on Sol and Bitcoin in that range. So we got filled on some really nice limit buy orders. So we're in profit on those. So um, 
Uh, awesome. And um, what we, but October for sure, it should be up uh, an up month. And um, well, you know, uh, it in in history historically has been up month. Um, now, no guarantees, but I really feel strongly Q4 is the is the big push. Whether we get the blow off top in this Q4 or into 2025, that's the big question. But I think traders are starting to front run and position themselves ahead of the pending a push up in October. So maybe that's why we could see some higher um, higher prices here in September. I can pull up the seasonality chart showing traditionally September has been a down month, but a lot of factors involved. We have the economic um, factors. Uh, we have the election rather, and um, all these other things. So liquidity coming back in the market, uh, Michael Saylor buying another billion dollars with a B. And so um, my spidey sense is uh, we go up from here. And uh, so, but uh, we always have to be aware of, of uh, where we might want to be careful and take some profits. And I'll get into that in the charts. I still would advise that we, we as predominantly swing traders, we take profits into those lower upward edges of the trend line and where all those sell orders are for a pullback before the breakout. But from here to there, we can make some some nice profits. Okay, um, let's see. 52K Bitcoin was the price bottom, Bitfinex analysts say. Um, you know, I had limit buy orders in at 52K. I didn't get filled. It got real close. It got real close to it. But uh, I have to double check that actually. But I don't think they filled. And I had 50K uh, buy limit orders in. Would have been great to pick up some Bitcoin at 50K, but I uh, didn't quite get there. All right, so let's yeah see uh, our earlier view. Bitcoin's dip. It didn't. This that headline's misleading. I had I missed it by seven hundred fifty six dollars, but I did buy some more at fifty four k on a limit buy order. So they're saying that could represent a potential local bottom. And um, uh, incidentally, in our market cycle secrets uh, course with Juan Villaverde, which we had this week, uh, he's been saying he also believes most likely that the cycle bottom is in, the 80-day cycle bottom is in, and the 20-day um, cycle bottom. So, so all these things are kind of lining up to that was it. It's time to be uh, carefully buying and dollar cost averaging. So, um, you know, we can look up some uh, altcoins here in a little bit as well. So, um, you know, I don't want to go too far down the rabbit hole. We dive into this in more detail on tomorrow's M3 Active Trader class. Again, it's uh, where we have coin recommendations in real time, 24-7 access to me in a private signal group. If you'd like to learn more about that, you go over to moonstream.io and click on this button here for M3 Active Trader or m3 or moonstream.io slash m3 and can read all about it and how you can get uh, our basic base indicators for free live uh, uh chat every day and uh, you can reach me all the time for questions membership area with some tools like a portfolio tracker dollar cost averaging worksheet um guys this is the time to be an m3 we are coming out with some great picks and uh if you guys want help with well, my help calling these and nailing these ups and downs, then you want to be uh, checking out M3 Active Trader. You get all these tools too, like candlestick, high probability cheat sheets. And there's a picture here showing that I actually do trade. And that's uh, two of the computers I have in front of me now. Uh, there are essentially five at this point, but it um, doesn't mean anything other than I've been watching a lot of things. So check that out. Um, and I'll you can just drop that. I'll drop the link in here or um, you can go to moonstream.io and learn all about our other things, including our free resources. We will be talking about our trader success checklist and looking at some coins in a minute. So uh, with that in mind, uh, coming down here, here they've pulled up the same FedWatch tool that I was just showing you. And uh, yeah, so the odds of 50 basis point rate cut are 67%, and which has dropped a little bit. And this is the real-time version of it, but it's, you know, it's looking pretty good. The question is, uh, what? how does the market react? And I think we probably see a bit of a sell the news event. So this pump ahead of the meeting tomorrow makes sense. And, um, you know, depending on how much it pumps, um, and I'll show you another one of our indicators which will tell us if we should sell some and take profits. It's our Bollinger Band Pro indicator. Most Bollinger Bands are incorrectly configured for crypto. Uh, we've fixed that problem. It tells exactly when it's to time to sell and take some profits. All right. So with that in mind, I'll be unpack this. I'll, un I'll close this article. This one here, seven hours ago, Bitcoin traders saying it's too early to call a Bitcoin bottom. Um, well, I don't know. That was seven hours ago. I'm I'm essentially um, eighty to eighty five, ninety percent so that that was that was the uh, bottom. But there's still that outlier, and I'll talk about that. And there's a very prominent uh, short trader that's adamant we'll go back down to forty four k. I don't see any reason for that, but um, you never know. 
I I'm bullish on buying it. That's the bottom line. Bottom Bitcoin battles trend lights. So I have the Bitcoin hat on today. And so fader, trader, let's see. Yes, they have all these uh, expert traders I've never heard of. Let's see. A 21 day. All of this will unpack together. Um, I, you know, I, I'll, I'll do my own TA on that. Bitcoin price action, tough to call after the Fed rate decision. So let's see this. Uh, so Bitcoin could rally as high as 65K following rate cuts. Uh, now that's, that's a wag. That's a wild ass guess. Why does he say 65K? Well, I don't know. Let's see. What is he seeing here? Um, I've got a number of charts up here, but probably it's, uh, let's see, just from the top, these trend lines here. We want to be watching and so i mean really we have to clear um yeah 64k right in there 65k i can see that uh it's an important level back in here so so that that's that's a pretty good number uh, right in here but there's a number of re rejection levels here and resistance levels that we need to be ready to clear above Okay, so for now, I'll turn off this early reversal indicator, which which did actually call exactly down in this buy zone down below. You can see my cursor, double bottom, two early reversal indicators. That was our accidental discovery. And uh, for those of you who are new, uh, this has been the tool that's uh, been able to call all of the major inflection points since July of 2021 when we started playing around with it. It works on a daily, weekly, monthly basis. You can see these red arrows here correctly called the top back here. And, and there was a certain pattern that I noticed on the weekly time frame where I was alerting people, it's time to get out. I was like, it, this should not be happening here. But um, we're seeing the same uh, patterns as uh, we saw back here in November of 2021. See that right there? And that was the market top. So right in here, I saw the same setup. There was this red arrow, our early reversal indicator, bearish engulfing candle, and then two of our other signals also flagged bearish. So on the opposite side, on the bullish side, we are actually bouncing and holding on that 50 week exponential moving average. So I really like this chart, a big buy block here down below. We can see uh, this here with, um, uh, let's see, I need to get my arrow pointer so I can move these around. So this is one of our other signals that shows where the buyers are. So this was a great signal. And another reason I'm calling for this was the uh, the bottom and tradable top. But we do have to clear. This makes it a little bit clearer. We have to clear this 64K level on a closing basis, 65, 66K, right in that range. You know, I agree with that. We want to see that. Um, break, but I'm really not going to be fully comfortable until we're above 75k, to be honest. Because this wick up here, you know, we can certainly wick up on these 74k. Look, a close and holding above 74k, I would hold some powder dry just to buy into strength because there's a lot of sell uh, sell pressure up in this range, and um, you know I'm you know I'm not giving any individual financial advice, um, so I can say these things. And so that's what my read is. So this, I still believe this is a buy zone right in here. And I have another chart that shows that. So we're bouncing back and forth a little bit. Uh, if you do have any questions, uh, we'll get to that uh, in a moment. And um, if you have anything you want me to cover, uh, let me know. So let's see, um, skimming through this, tough to call, 53K, high is 65K. Yeah, it's 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 a bit of a wild card, but um you know, the markets are certainly trying to get ahead of the trade. Um, I don't know. It is a tough one. It's probably the hardest to call. I had, I called this top with relative ease and this bottom with relative ease. And also I was calling, calling the bottom to get back in the market back in here as well. These are relatively easy in the scheme of things at extremes. But with this pullback and this choppiness coming down, it's made it very difficult to uh, make a prediction. But I just, I do think this is a, a macro bull flag still playing out. And uh, typically they resolve sooner than this. But when this bull flag breaks out, it could take us to uh, significant heights in terms of the total market cap measured move on the the uh, bull flag breakout there, 4.8 trillion. So, you know, the risk favors, uh, fortune favors the brave and you have to be somewhat uh, risk, uh, risk on at this point to position for this next move, which I think is coming. At any rate, uh, I'm just trying to give you guys the context and to just tell you flat out, if you don't have these tools, by the way, you need to have these. And if you want to get your hands on the these uh, indicators, it's also, you can go to M3 Active Trader and click on the Crypto Mastery button here, or straight to cryptomastery.org slash pro for these pro tools and to get a lifetime subscription. I've just updated this page. Go watch 
this video. If you're struggling in today's markets, if you're having trouble calling tops and bottoms, we've nailed this, we've figured it out. No one's 100%, but we've been really good at And the basis of this are these indicators from this class. So you can get your hands on these over here. Go watch this video and read about uh, the signals that I'm sharing with you today because they have given us a tremendous edge. Let's see, all of this um, downside target, you know, we've talked about this here. I don't want to go too far into the news. I'm looking for some relevant things to help put a frame around the information. So, you know, we here's some, some information that we want to unpack. Rate cuts have been viewed as bullish for risk sectors. Um, you know, that's the view. But in history, we've seen we've seen this happen. The last time a liquidity and the rate cutting cycle happened, we, we drifted downward before shooting much higher. But um, in theory, rate cuts have been viewed as bullish uh, for risk sectors, allowing investors to borrow capital at a lower cost and seek out risk to lower interest on cash and treasuries. So uh, it's a bit uh, a bit uh, hard to wrap your head around if you're new to economics and finance, but essentially pretty easy to understand. Let's talk about, um, yeah, so basically, however, several analysts have pointed out to previous market activity in 2001 and 2007, where rate cuts preceded recessions, right, uh, particularly the presence of weakening economic. So that is the, the, um, the reason just to slow down a bit, where we have to be careful and, um, and really sort of think about if everyone else gets super bullish on this, it could be a bull trap. And that's why I've been saying for some time, th this is a really tricky one to call. We've been trading these ranges very well, but uh, again, I'll be taking profits up into those upper ranges and and maybe setting some, uh, not stop losses, but uh, profit, take profit losses, um, limit, um, what do you call it, trailing, take profits uh, orders. So with this pump we're getting, if we see a big sell-off tomorrow on the rate cut, uh, we'll have locked in some profits. And so, and we talk about how to do that in our courses and uh, technology that we can use and you can use to do that. All right, <clears throat> continued uncertainty about the upcoming presidential election weighing on the crypto market. Also true, investors unsure how the parties will feel about the crypto sector and U.S. soil. Uh, the betting markets are moving lockstep with Bitcoin price on uh, Trump's um, likelihood of winning Price price goes up. People are foreseeing a more positive crypto uh, outlook on that, and vice versa. If uh, Kamala, not to get into the politics of everything, but uh, typically um, the Democrats have been anti-crypto, so um, it's pretty much a single issue vote for most crypto investors. So um, you know, with um, that, that's also a big factor. And the I don't know if this is true. Who's leading? Who with the polls? Um, the the point being, as we all know, that. Uh, that could be a factor. All right. Um, let's see. Uh, we're done with that. Trying to get to the charts here as soon as possible. Bitcoin traders still too early to tell. And they feel like we just talked about that. Uh, I, I already closed this. There's a lot of different studies that would show we're real close to a breakout. And uh, I'll show you guys one in a minute. So the short-term sentiment ups and downs, not really as important. And, um, you know, we go, we'll go into some deeper things tomorrow, but uh, things like the uh, Bollinger Bands width and um, some of our own studies and indicators. So let's see, here's what happened to crypto today. Uh, poise for volatility, head of interest rate. We already talked about that. Donald Trump's silent. Uh, not sure what that is. I think he's got a new token. He's I don't, I'm not going to get into that either. So um, don't need that. I might check over crypto panic for a minute, but um, let's see. Yeah, I'm not going to get into that. Okay, so basically I want to do one thick quick thing uh, crypto panic for the most timely news and we'll see if there's anything kind of pressing here and then we'll dive into the charts fair enough all right <clears throat> and let's see bitcoin exchange deposit is but depositing addresses at lowest level in years um potential relief and selling pressure uh, okay um that would mean more that would be more bitcoin is staying off exchange right as bitcoin goes on to exchanges or depositing onto exchanges that's usually for selling and uh foretelling as well uh so let's see if anything else is uh is 
worth noting Bitcoin dominance. It's a two-year peak. We'll take a look at Bitcoin dominance. We'll look, we usually will look at that tomorrow's class. Um, I'll pull it up briefly. As Bitcoin dominance breaks above 60%, you know, that's where the the rally really starts to run. And then when it peaks and starts to come down is when the money flows out of Bitcoin. People are taking profits, putting them into other coins. Um, like I was about to say ETH, but ETH has been selling off the ETF not doing well. I do think Solana is uh, give, delivers outsized gains over ETH here, this uh, this bull run. And we've been seeing that on a Sol Solana ETH pair as well. I uh, issued a buy on that a week ago. Let's see. <clears throat> yeah, um, Bitcoin. I think that's about it, guys, which is fine with me. We don't want to go too far down into the news, but let's see this on the block. As we said, uh, Bitcoin exchanges addresses seeing the lowest deposits, the well, lowest level in years. That means people are holding their Bitcoin and taking it off of. So that would uh, decrease sell pressure. And we're getting closer to that supply shock and demand surge. Maybe we'll pull up the study that we've been monitoring for over a year now, the 10 factors that could lead to 100 and 150,000 Bitcoin, this being one of them, a demand surge as sell pressure wanes. And this is why this is an important headline <clears throat> and an important trend. So again, CryptoQuant reports Bitcoin exchange deposits address reached multi-year low, signaling potential easing and selling pressure as we saw in the headline above. Uh, Bitcoin exchange reserves have dropped by 15% and since the beginning of the year. So that's bullish. All right, well, good. We made some pretty good time on the news here, you guys, just about 30 minutes. So let's jump over and get back to the charts. Because as I say all the time, show me the charts, I'll tell you the news. And what this chart is telling me here on Bitcoin is that the market is uh, more risk on and risk favorable. Now, we the rocket indicator has gone away. What's very important with these signals is that because these are determined on a closing candle basis, and what we often do see is fake pumps that sell off. And we so the determination for the rocket on the launch pad um, and what I'll do here in a moment is I'll pull up the trade success checklist with the definition. This is the pattern. I, I can't say I invented it. I'm the only one that's that's noticed it or talked about it. So I coined the term rocket on the launch pad. And so what? let me turn off the ERI here so I can explain this for a minute. But essentially, it is a candle with the candle body on a support line like the 21-day EMA, that's the best one, or the 50-day EMA, and it has to have a, a wick down below, kind of like a bottle rocket. If you ever lit, lit one of those off or fired off rockets in the Boy Scouts where you put it on the launch pad and you hook up the electrodes and you turn the key and it ignites and the thing shoots up in the sky, well, typically this is the pattern that follows through with the rocket indicator, but it has to close within five or 10% of the high of the day. Okay, so we saw that when we first logged on, we had a rocket signal, but since Bitcoin's selling off a little bit and um, we're seeing these topping tails, it's now gone. So we don't know if this sells off here. Again, if we close below 60K, then that's not a bullish sign. It's been a little bit of a bull trap. I'm still bullish because we have this buy block down in here, but I really would like to see this close above the 60K range to give us that strength to come up in here, but I will be taking some profits on this likely resistance area. Um, now, if you're confused by this, well, markets go up and down. What, I, what I'm what i expecting here, if it'll get, let me grab my uh, drawing tool, is this kind of a re retest and then breakthrough retest and then more resistance here as you know this is likely what we'll see um unlikely we'll see this para parabolic push higher um right out of the gate okay so so we're in sort of a, a still a swing trading environment um this is great though uh, with solana i've been able to turn 50 sol into 90 uh since may trading these ranges and uh, in my ira just a small uh, small block there but um oops <clears throat> and it would be 100 but um, one of my sell orders up here didn't go through and I thought it had sold so I was buying it back but I've been buying Saul in this green area and selling it up in the red area on this upper trend line so and uh, we've been using 
pardon me, our early reversal indicators combined with the, and I'll turn our radar on for a minute because the radar is giving us some red signals. So we wouldn't want to be buying anything right now. Our multi time frame radar giving us more clues on these markets. When it's all red, I'm not buying anything. If it's all green, I'm probably buying. But if it's all red at like an inflection point, definitely selling out um, because I have buy or we have buy. Uh, orders down below. I'm not selling anything. I'll be buying more at 125 anywhere in this zone. Um, but uh, for now, I am accumulating based on this and been trading this range very nicely. The prior time when it uh, dipped down on that flash crash, I had buy limit orders in here. And then we saw this uh, bullish ERI, another sign to get in and then take profits on the bearish ones. So if you're struggling with timing your trades, these ERI arrows really giving us an edge, especially when combined with these other indicators, which I'll turn some of these off for now. And just to focus on the two most important ones, which are the trend strength indicator and our early reversal indicator. Now, these were great on weekly timeframes and monthly. Uh, the monthly time frame um, for Bitcoin only fired four times at or near market bottoms. And that's what gave me the the uh, not the courage, but the conviction to put in a buy uh, order to get back in the markets in Jan 2023 at the depths of the bear market right after yeah, we hit 16.5 and stayed there for a while, which um, I had already or also forecast uh, five months beforehand. So um, um, these are really giving us an edge. I, I'm encouraging you. Many of you already have these. I see familiar names in our M3 Active Trader class and in our Retire Rich classes. Um, and talking to those of you that don't maybe you don't have these yet, these will certainly help you in your trading and will more than pay for themselves in the next bull run. I guarantee it. Uh, and so what we are doing in this class, reading some news, showing how to use the indicators. And uh, toward the end, we can look up some coins and some hot movers if you like. All right, so just showing you this, uh, hindsight 2020, obviously, but uh, is also helpful to notice these patterns. So the way that we use these when we see a red ERI, early reversal indicator, and incidentally, this is not some simple cute arrow that just appears. There's a lot of um, math and quant work on the actual oscillator, but we don't show it because it hurts the eyeballs. And then so we coded it with arrows, but essentially... I noticed a certain pattern that when it happens within three time periods and it moves from a one level to another uh, and within three time periods, uh, then it's highly likely to go and oscillate all the way to the other side. And uh, Joe, our programming, our quant engineer partner, also layered in a, a Keltner channel. So you don't see all of that stuff, but that's what's going on here. And now our confirmation on these is this TSI. So when we see a red arrow, and we see the TSI flip red, and ideally the confirmation is here below 80, then that's that confirmation to get out, and we can see that oscillated down here. Similarly, on the bullish side, when we kind of see these green arrows and the green TSI as an entry point, especially if we see a double bottom on those because we see the nicest moves there. This has worked uh, very well on Bitcoin on the weekly time frame. And uh, so I'm talking to mostly those of you who are this is new for, but also to our, our longtime traders. Remember, specifically, what will our signals be to get out of the market? You know how many people are called the top? correctly. I did. And um, and so we believe we'll call the top again correctly. I called it here. Some of you remember I was saying in November of 2021, it's time to get into cash. December as well. January, I was pounding my fist, get out of the market. Some of you listened. Uh, at least one of my private clients uh, said he listened and saved 100K missing out on this bloodbath. Uh, so, so I'm not trying to bo boast or brag. I'm saying these are the signals we use. There are four and uh, but essentially on a weekly time frame, I saw this sitting up here again, and I was saying, guys, we should be breaking to new all time highs, but um, we're seeing our market topping signals. So we got out here. OK, and we've been out largely. So um, if when we do break up, I do think we go to new highs and we'll be watching specifically for this and this and then that fourth indicator to to align and that is either our signal line or our rsi pro and so we can talk about those in a little bit 
Uh, but in this case, when we have four of them aligned, confluence, these are based on different criteria. So here, when we had this red bearish divergence that aligned with this arrow and this bearish engulfing candle and our TSI was already red, that was confirming, confirming this was a sell signal that it was time to get out of the markets, okay? And since I threw it out there a moment ago, I haven't pulled up a monthly chart in a while. Um, we can do that and usually look at that uh, on our other class. I, I do have to say though, um, it, it's uh, and this is why it's so hard investing when the signals are not in confluence. We uh, we do have a red TSI on the monthly time frame. Uh, now this can stay up here for quite a length of time, and um, we um, let's see this red this red uh, RSI Pro signal con in confluence with that, but we don't have a monthly um, necessarily. So I'll be watching this. This is a little bit concerning. We're breaking down below 80 on this big longer time frame oscillator. So um, we'll have to watch this, but we have seen these RSI pros come in a bit early. I'm not watching for that. I mostly wanted to show you on the uh, on the flip side of that, the uh, on the monthly time frame, we usually use the ERI in a, a bullish time frame. So if I had the longer term chart up here, we'd have one down in here. See this green arrow? This was the early reversal indicator at the bottom of the market in May of 2015, at the bottom in March of 19. And again, here, as I was saying, Jan of 2023. So we nailed that entry and uh, we were able to get into the markets early with that. So what am I seeing here? You know, if we do come down to 50K on this 21 month EMA, um, you know, worst case scenario, the 50 month EMA, I don't think that happens, but uh, we'll be we'll be keeping an eye on it. And really the topping indicators is the weekly. So, so far we're good. I do think we push higher and, uh, and that's where things will head. Let's look at the total market cap. And let me pull up the chat, by the way, just to see if you guys have any chat. Uh, Ray asking about, uh, yeah, I don't know what's happening with that and don't really want to get uh, into that here, Ray. We can talk about it tomorrow in uh, the uh, M3 class. So essentially, um, I, well, let's see, I'll go to total market cap. We'll look at Sol and ETH. The total market cap tells the bigger story. Again, we've got a ton of sell pressure up here in this 2.65 trillion. And so I have an alert though saying that that would be the breakout confirmed. I'm going to move that up. I think 2.75, 2.7 is going to be the confirmed breakout on the total market cap. And remember, everybody, uh, it wasn't Bitcoin that call, that was the um, catalyst for the market top. It was the, the total market cap, which came up here and hit $3 trillion, you know, Almost, I can't say to the dollar, but almost exactly, pretty much. It hit exactly. These big round numbers act as magnets. And so we'll talk about that a little bit more tomorrow too in these, um, what, what I expect to see here. But we do have to, to clear these hurdles to have any chance of this big massive breakout. And uh, in uh, the M3 class I showed last week, the measured move on this bull flag, where that could go. So we just were building market structure. I do believe this starts to break out in October. As of now, we're holding the 50-week EMA on the total market cap, and we have this buy block down below. So that gives me confidence that we're in good shape, okay? Um, and moving right along here, let's see. Let's take a look at let's, let's take a look at ETH first. Uh, now, ETH is holding in a buy zone. It is technically, uh, it's come back down to its upward trending channel here. So I would suggest ETH is in, is in a pretty good spot. I have buy limit orders in in the 2000 range, but uh, I don't know that we hit that. I'd say uh, 2250. Actually, I got I got filled at 2150. I remember that. I'll have to double check that. But right in this buy block zone. And so for ETH, uh, it's once it starts to turn, might be a good place to start picking up some ETH. And let's see on uh, okay, on the on the weekly time frame. See, the weekly time frame is gonna give more momentum on the follow through. Uh, so the daily can push around a bit, but the weekly is going to give our longer term direction. So we have a bullish divergence on ETH on our RSI Pro here. Well, has that worked in the past? The last time we had a bullish divergence green circle was right at the bottom here back in November of 2022 in a weekly time frame before this ma massive rally. The time before now and that that coincided. This is why our indicators are so great and confluence because well, that's and I'll I will pull up that trade success checklist uh, because uh, you can download that free and it really helps. When we see the ERI Pro, that early reversal indicator and our trend strength indicator, 
go green, that's usually good enough. When we get the three of them, we have um, the TSI here, the ERI here. Usually they're not exactly aligned, but in that same range. And I'll show you in that trade success checklist, we're checking them off. And as more of them turn green, adding to the position, dollar cost averaging, that's the name of the game. So we have this uh, this this uh, TSI going green here, the RSI Pro and the TSI. We'll look at that massive move on ETH. If we go back further, I'll show you how to, now this was a little bit farther back here and we did catch this nice little bounce, but we were in a macro downtrend and this did have a bit of a pump up here, but then this red ERI would have negated that rally on this one. Okay, so so that's how these things, um, you can get in and out and swing trade these much more effectively. Uh, incidentally, these work uh, on all, all time frames and fractals. I used the TSI when I was day trading with a lot of success on the one minute, three minute, five minute, 15 hourly. Um, so where what am I seeing right now though? We're gonna set an alert on this, okay? You can set alerts on these signals. I'm gonna set an alert on the TSI Pro and here's exactly how we'll do it. We wanna know when it goes green and above 20. So we can set two alerts on this. When it first goes green, that's our first signal, especially if we have an ERI with it, that green arrow, okay? Uh, for now, I'll turn off this RSI Pro. These are the first two indicators you can use, um, but also bullish, by the way, we ETH held at its 200-day EMA. Let me just confirm that is the 200-day and not the 100-day. It is the 200. So um, this is bullish. It held this lower trend line. It held the 200-day EMA, and there's a buy block. I think ETH looks pretty good here, but the confirmation would be uh, on the TSI here. So I'm going to right, I'm going to click on it to get the dots showing. I'll right click on it and go add alert. And what I want to show <clears throat> is crossing up over 20. So that would be over this 20 line. So that would be one signal. And I'm going to shorten this. And I also like to give myself a buy signal on these. So that would be one criteria. The other would be uh, when it first turns green. So we'll do that as well. So we can have two alerts and the crossing up TSI Pro weekly. And uh, let's see, I've got to get, I've got to get Joe to tweak this so it, it shows when it first turns green. So um, anyway, um, there's a way to do it. And I have to, uh, I've forgotten how to do that. Because usually I just use above 20. That's that's the safer confirmation. And, uh, and so I believe it's this top one here uh, when it first crosses into green. Let's see, value, okay, we'll come back to that. I'll let you know, you guys. So um, with that in mind, but but here's a good segue over to the, get go over to moonstream.io, download this trader success checklist right here. And we're gonna dive into that a bit because this can be, this can be super profitable for you by following this and um, using our, our indicators because this is how, it's exactly how I do it. I just do it in my head. And once you use the checklist for a while, you'll be able to do it without having to pull it up. But it's an interactive PDF. And so I'm going to go ahead and download this here on my end. We'll do this together. You do have to download it and open the PDF version for the interactive version, which means you can push on it and click on the uh, checkbox. Okay, so uh, with that, I'm gonna go ahead and go to my downloads and then open up there. Questions come in, Perry says, ETH looks like it's ready to pump, I agree. Touching bottom on both channels, let's pull up that chart. Um, and uh, Perry's saying, touching the bottom on both channels, yes, and let's see, on the 200 EME buy block, okay, I, I just I just was saying that, so I maybe uh, your great minds think alike, Perry. So, uh, hey, success leads, Leaves clues, everyone. Perry's in our M3 class and uh, our one of our classes. And so that's what we teach. Not really, not super hard uh, once you know what to look for. Okay, so here is the trader success checklist. All right, um, in terms of that, the uh, ERI. So let's go through this. Let's use it on, let's use it on ETH. We're usually doing it on Sol, but I think ETH is a good one. And for now, I'll turn off the radar. I'm going to go ahead and uh, turn on the ERI Pro is on. Let's take a look at the daily time frame and see what we're working with. And let's see. I don't know. I don't think this is the ideal candidate here because we don't have an ERI. <clears throat> Normally, 
I'd want to see an ERI in here, Perry, but uh, but but not always. I guess this could be this could be an exception because in the end, it doesn't matter. It just matters how much alignment we have. But we don't have a TSI turning green. Let's do this. Let's use it as a negating factor. So in this case, we won't get a buy signal just yet on ETH. Is there an ERI showing a green up arrow? So the answer is no. Uh, is the is the TSI green and above 20 It looking like this? Okay. And the answer is no. So basically we have zero out of 20, but we do have some bullish factors here. And let's take a look at what they might be. So um, now we haven't added the RSI Pro to the trade success checklist yet. I know I need to do it. It's been super busy. Um, but in in essence, that would be one check mark. We have a bullish buy block in there. So if we go over in there, I believe this has been added. There's, we're continually updating this. Okay, you know what, you guys, we need to add the buy blocks. We need to add uh, the uh, new RSI Pro. So um, uh, we'll get right on that. I, will, I promise we'll work on that. But essentially, so let's do this so I don't lose anybody um, because this really is impactful and important. If we jump over to Solana, and uh, Solana has been really um, a good one to trade. So do we have, we have an ERI. Let's find a good one that's setting up nicely so we can do that together with the uh, the indicators. So it, it looks like we're a bit early. I'm seeing some nice movements. Okay, here we go, Phantom Coin. Let's look at Phantom Coin, you guys. And so with the trade success checklist, uh, we've got Phantom Coin. We had a recent ERI, this bullish early reversal indicator. Okay, so on the, let's see, how am I gonna do this most effectively? Uh, put that away, escape out of here. I'll move that. I'm gonna flip between these two. So with Phantom Coin, We've got um, the ERI green. You see that? Okay, so if you're new and you're looking at this, is there an ERI showing a green up arrow? Boom, yes. So right away, it's changed the trading success score to two, sorry, one out of 21. We want to see at least a two here to start buying anything. If you don't have a two or higher, don't buy it. But um, with this trade, we're going to easily be hitting the two because we also have the TSI going green and above 20 that stands for the trend strength indicator and above 20 so there we would have another checkbox so now it's updated our score two out of 21 i often start dabbling into a trade with this at least having two okay um but we also have a signal line this is another indicator that joe created a different type of oscillator when it turns over the lower over the top and puts in a green circle that's another bullish sign. So do we have a uh, signal line here? And so this little pattern. So now we're at three out of 21. Now our other one is, is the trend indicator showing a bell? Now the trend indicator is a little different. And this usually will create a, and show a longer term trend, but it gives specific buy signals. So what we look for is the key in the bell. The bell is a signal that it's time to buy. And the vertical green line appears on all the other indicators so that you don't really have to have this indicator running. It's not that we're deprecating it, but you see how these green lines are also on the other charts. That tells us, hey, there's a key bell here without even having to load this. Trading view kind of limits you on how many indicators you can have access active at one time. So that's the reason for that. But uh, what I love about this indicator is right here though, we see this red line turning green. It looks like it's setting up for a new key bell sequence. And it's kind of like Mario Brothers comes running out and grabs all the coins, so it's kind of fun. The bag of money is uh, is often your take profit indicator, indicating it's going to pull back before running again. So we'll watch this. So again, we have the uh, we don't have a, a key bell here, so this is no. But there's the trend indicator showing a green midline, and it is just turning over. So we should get a key, possibly a bell buy signal on Phantom Coin coming up. So now. We have four. Let's look for some more patterns. Not all of them are our signals. Bullish engulfing candles. Is it at candle body support? So here on Phantom um, Coin back here, we did have a bullish engulfing candle. So we could have come over and done that. So now we're at a five out of 21. Would that have been a pretty good trade? It's starting to play out. And now, especially now, we're back up above the 21 and 50 day. So you see that all of these little patterns really teach you and train you to look for the things that matter ignore everything else i you know i i don't trade all of the 
the Fibonacci circles and Elliott waves and GAN fans and all of that. You don't need it. It's just a, it's if that if that's your if that's your jam, good for you. But um, um, I, I find it distracting, and uh, I prefer prefer the simple indicators. And we've done very well with that. So if you're a new trader and you're uh, wondering what do I pay attention to, what do I ignore, you're in the right place because we teach that and ignore all those fancy signals that you just don't need and can lead you to analysis paralysis. Our indicators are simple, effective, and powerful. Okay, uh, enough about that. Is the candle body at support? Well, we right now we are candle body at a new support line, and that would be the EMAs as well. So, you know, you can start to see these other patterns emerging, but, um, and here's that rocket indicator. Is, they, is there a rocket? Now, on Bitcoin, we had one the other day. On Chainlink, we had one the other day. A rocket is a green candle with the real body resting at support. So right here. So we've programmed that to really help. So this is what normally happens. Rocket on the launch pad. It's on the 21-day EMA. A little bit of a fuse. We call this the rocket fuel. The taller that candle, the more rocket fuel. The higher it shoots in the air. And generally, it's good for a good pump. And then it falls back to earth. So it's a good profit pump on these. And so generally, it will close at the top of the day. That's really key on this rocket and uh, on the launch pad. So you can kind of, so once you see it, you can unsee it. We have it as one of our indicators uh, that you can read about on that page. So there's some other things here, uh, the buy blocks. This is money flow. That's part of the ERI Pro. And then I'm, I'm going to talk about our Bollinger Bands also. But you can see here, this is when you would start adding this to this trade um, at DCA, adding to trades as the trade score goes up. We've added patterns like the three inside up. And also here is a, this is their multi time frame radar. Uh, so all green, good to go. Average true range. I know it's a lot, but you know what? The more confluence that you have that, uh, and you generally won't have, rarely will you have all of them. And that's not the point. Uh, we've created this to give us more of an idea. What I love about the uh, multi time frame radar, there is some resistance here on the weekly time frame on Phantom, by the way. Um, but so that's what it says on the time frame of daily phantom is bullish on the weekly it is bullish. However, the monthly and three months still bearish on phantom. And what that means is we could pump up higher for a little bit uh, on these shorter time frames, maybe up into this zone and then pull back down a bit because the longer time frames will have kind of weigh it down and then maybe build some market structure so that that monthly turns bullish, you know, kind of this kind of a pattern. And that's what we expect to see. That's how you would uh, read that. So the average true range I'll talk about, this is excellent for knowing, you know, where you keep your stop losses, but also um, where, where are you in the overall scheme of things? Typically when these turn to bullish on timeframes, it's a great entry point. See that entry right there, nice big bull move on phantom coin. We're still bearish, but I think we're pretty close to flipping over on this. So um, what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna set an alert on the ATR because I'd like to know on a weekly time frame. Uh, when this thing flips to um, bullish. So add alert and phantom price. Now we'll see, it's not doing it on the actual, let me see, I gotta do it here. So on the alert, uh, sometimes, no, it's gonna be this one here. Add alert on the ATR entry, that's what I wanted. So basically this little rocket means that's an entry zone. So I wanna say, uh, instead of the trailing stop, you can use that as a trailing stop, but I'm gonna say, by ATR entry weekly phantom because this is for a longer term signal. Now, what you can also do is set that to happen every time that happens, but we'll leave that alone for now. Um, but essentially giving you all the tools you need to confirm and double confirm your trades on these using these different patterns. Now, I promised we would talk about the Bollinger Bands. It's one more thing we can add to our arsenal. Okay, the EMA ribbon's looking really good here, by the way, on Phantom Coin. We'll talk about that tomorrow in the M3 Trader class. Uh, guys, if you really want to dive into this and, and have daily interaction, daily access to me, uh, you can find out. I would join our M3 Active Trader class. Many of you are here today, and uh, we talk about trade every day. We're posting in there, and I'm just going to pull it up and show you guys. Here's our M3 Active Trader chat. And very active community of smart traders. I'm giving trade recommendations. I'm posting daily, giving you my read on the indicators that are the basis of what we do. And uh, also giving you guys some trade alpha and buy recommendations uh, last week. And uh, and so that is part of what you get. You can always ask questions in there in the M3 Active Trader chat. 
So uh, once again, you can go over to our website, m 3 uh, moonstream.io slash m3 and find out more about that or to our find our indicators uh guys you need those in this business in this business in this market uh so anyway um I'm not trying to be salesy here i'm just trying to really give you guys the tools and a nudge to give you the tools you need i've been trading 25 years these are the best i've used it's the only indicators i use and there's a reason for that on the trade success checklist, there are bearish uh, setups as well that you can uh, play with. Um, I'm going to close that for now, but you guys can download that for free on the website and really boost and elevate your trading by using them. Let's go down to a different time frame and you know, let's look at some other time frames here. On a perfect example of the Bollinger Bands. A deep breath, everyone. So, this is new for some of you guys. The um, so the Bollinger Band Pro. The problem with a regular Bollinger Band. And I'll just show it to you and I'll turn ours off and we'll compare those. The standard Bollinger Band is based on two standard deviations. Okay, so if you go into TradingView or any whatever trading platform you're using and type in Bollinger Band and you click on that, it's going to say, all right, uh, well, uh, here's what you got and here are the Bollinger Bands. But this is this is fairly useless. Okay, seeing a buy block on the iBit. We'll go over to that in a minute. So it's fairly useless, right? Because, and I'll go full screen because you can see that uh, the price is going way above the price. Now I've color coded mine to match ours. Usually they're blue. But you see how the prices are going way above the Bollinger Band here and way below them. It's kind of a very loose fitting signal. We'll compare that to our Bollinger Band Pro which contains price exactly because our settings are correct. They're mod they're optimized for crypto. So if we turn off this other stock market Bollinger Band version, right, which really isn't helpful, we get much better reads on when to take profit. See that? We came up on ETH right to this. Works great on the shorter time frames. People ask all the time, when should I take profits? And this is my one of my best answers. And I'll when we double that up, I'll get to that. But right here is an X. This is a perfect setup for taking profits. But back here, even when it touches that upper Bollinger Band, see how it sells off? Comes up, gets above the Bollinger Band here. This is our version, and it sells off. And similarly, when it gets down to the bottom of the Bollinger Band, great buying opportunity because then it usually shoots back up to the other, the other side of it. Okay, but look at this. When you see price up toward the upper Bollinger Band and in the sell block, excellent take profit signal and we saw it again here we saw it again these two are excellent sell prices before it dropped all the way down in this range and similarly on the one hour chart of eth um when we get a vertical line that's that's a more a stronger sell signal because it's showing that it's closing the candles closing above the upper bollinger band but visually it says hey it's a take profit zone so eth will likely pull back if you want to put a good limit buy order on eth go to 2340 and and put it in there could come back to retest here but i would get ahead of a little bit 2340 i bet you that'll hit and then it'll turn and go higher uh, i'll even put an alert on that so we can see if that happens and uh, i'll just say bye you guys can hold me to that uh, once you start to see this stuff as it is, it's like watching the Matrix. And uh, once you're in the Matrix, you can't unsee it. All right. Um, so yeah, a quick pullback to 2340. Overall, I think the this TSI is going higher on the four-hour chart. So I think, you know, overall ETH is going to do well. It's just in some chop. For one hour, we'll pull back to 2340, and then it should go higher. We'll see. Um, all right. Any questions on any of that, you guys? Kind of going fast, but I wanted to give you an overall look at these. And uh, we do have trainings in the membership area for these coins. Let's look at some coins here and see if uh, any of these are lighting up our indicators. Anything else you guys want to see, let me know. Uh, you guys are awfully quiet today. Um, you know, I don't really give coin picks in this class. We do it in M3, but I'll be happy to pull up any charts that you guys want to look at. You know, Phantom Coin looking interesting selling off on this former prior support level now resistance so probably it pulls back down let's see it's a bit overbought on this daily tsi so i would wait for a pullback on phantom would not buy it here could it run up higher and run it can these tsis can stay up here for longer terms but generally i like to flip over to the weekly and see what that tells us the weekly is still bullish we have a weekly tsi and signal and starting to see our trend strength uh, indicator turn up or the trend indicator rather 
but uh, we do have sell pressure here. So again, I, I think Phantom Coin does, it's, it's got a break up above, pull back and retest. You might as well wait for this retest or, or you can buy some now and uh, wait for a retest to dollar cost average. These are some of my favorite setups. And starting to see that to kind of looking good. Phantom do, does starting is starting to look good for this bull run here. And, um, you know, I wouldn't go all in or an all out. That's the purpose of these sig signals is to go to, to know when to begin your entries and dollar cost averaging. So your initial buys. OK, and then uh, the more of the signals that line up and turn green, you can add to those positions. Uh, we have a great dollar cost averaging interactive Google Doc in the M3 members area that you can use to keep track of your budget, how much you want to allocate, your total allocation, how much on a percentage basis you're going to allocate to each coin you're watching. And then on each tab, you're adding to the position different prices. It'll calculate your average price. And that's how you can dollar cost average in. And that's the name of the game. That's really what you want to be doing ideally. Uh, Leslie, sure. Yeah, we can look at Superverse and Chainlink. Uh, Super was on fire last week and um, kind of tough to find it as far as where to buy it. We thought it was on Coinbase, but it's on Coinbase Wallet. Uh, but you can find it on Kraken and Binance. So let's take a look at this. Um, okay, so look, we 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 call this breakout here. Uh, it's pulled back. This looks very strong to me, um, and I'm glad you mentioned it because I haven't really talked too much about the... Um, this here, the money flow, these green boxes, okay? So essentially, this is money flow on the ERI Pro. This was a perfect setup on Superverse. We had the ERI trigger there. We had money flow coming in. This is a lot of buyers. That's probably Alex Becker buying a bunch of it. He's one of the founders. And uh, so, so we saw the TSI go green. And so that called this pump. We had the signal go green. We had a little bit of bearish divergence here. But it's fine. Uh, we don't have to worry about that. This is a very good looking chart. Uh, we're back above the 21, 50, and 200 day EMAs. So we can talk about golden crosses and bear uh, death crosses. I don't pay attention to that. It's a lagging indicator. But how about this, you guys? Well, what a beautiful signal here. The down in a buy block. This is what our buy block indicator. I don't think I mentioned that yet. Um, our order block detector. See, see how that that's like peeking behind the curtain, seeing where the buy orders are and the sell orders are. This has been a huge addition to our trading this year since the last bull cycle, because without it, look, without it, you might say, I don't know where this thing turns around. Look at that chart. Would you know to buy down in this range? No, you wouldn't. Not unless you had your buy block and the ERI Pro showing you and also this TSI going green. Look at these signals. This was a perfect buy setup. Okay, and if we did a, uh, if we did this on from here to there, it's a 77% run, you guys, and uh, and still going. That's how you win in these markets. Takes a little time to get the nuances, but that's what these classes are for. We do look over my shoulder and um, analysis. And, and by the way, what do we always say? We're always looking for a new trend line, a new trend channel. Well, guess what we have here? We have now identified a new upper trend channel. All you need is a few data points and uh, you can trade this thing all the way up. And, and that's what I would do is, is just massage this a bit. And you know, the two data points here and here, this is a very tradable new range. Okay. We are in an uptrend right now. Let's take a look at the ATR. So this is what I do. We're back into entry mode on the ATR. We're starting to turn higher, uh, the average true range. So I like this very much. And uh, I think this goes much higher uh, over time. And uh, and so everything's checked. It's checking all the boxes for me. This bounce was perfect right here too with EMA ribbons coming together. But uh, we could have, you know, what could you have done as dollar cost averaging in each point? And, uh, and so we were talking about it last week. Great looking chart. I told you this, guys, this was going to go higher. Um, Superverse looking good. Let's look at it on the weekly and then we'll move on. So when in doubt, zoom out. But we can see clearly here, this is a nice pattern forming. And on a macro, uh, no, I thought it might be a big, well, it is a big, ugly cup and handle. It's a big old cup. Here's the handle and it's starting to break higher. Um, a great looking chart, you guys. So Superverse, um, keep it on your radar. Let's look at Chainlink and looks this broad market rally coming in. Everything looking good ahead of the FOMC. So Chainlink, I put a buy recommendation out on Link last week 
and it uh, is still, you know, it's look at that. What is we had a rocket on here? Did it disappear? Let me check the other exchange because Chainlink I usually watch on Coinbase where it has more volume. Um, we had a rocket on that, didn't we? Didn't we, guys? Maybe that went away end of day because we certainly, yeah. See, that's why, you know, you can certainly get excited. I front run, I front ran that a bit. This was a rocket on the launch pad because it was closing, looked like it was closing toward the high an hour to go on the closing candle and they sold it off. And so sure enough, this thing pulled back a bit. But what do we have? We have put in a double bottom allegedly and trying to put in a higher low. I like these patterns. But let's see what our signals call us. A little bit overbought on the uh, daily. Um, but um, I think that Chainlink looked it looked very strong the other day. Hang on a second. What was I doing here? Radar. Where's my radar? Uh, there it is. Okay. Okay. So it's a little bit of sell pressure here. Chainlink. So I think we were watching it back here and back here. It was getting above the 50-day EMA. So it was a bit premature on that. Sometimes we'll do that. But uh, last three days, it sold off. So big, it's not participating in this rally as much as Bitcoin is. And it really needs to get back above this range. I would say buy chain link above 1250 in the strength once it gets back above those levels. But Chainlink, uh, you know, certainly a big um, player. It's a slow mover, but it's the center point and backbone of quite a lot of the crypto technology. It's a future Netflix and Amazon infrastructure play. Okay, so Chainlink, um, you know, I wouldn't worry about it. I would buy, I'd buy more at nine fifty all day long. Uh, set your alerts, you know, uh, if capital allows. But um, you know, we can see this uh, this accumulation down in that range, and let's take a look at it on a longer time frame. Not telling us too much on the monthly, other than holding that nine fifty range. Weekly, not so much. But uh, also holding, I just think I think Chainlink needs a little bit more time. So uh, with that, let's see a Bitcoin alt dominance chart. Forgot to check that. Uh, what about a Bitcoin versus alt dominance? Um, let's see. Well, we can look at the Bitcoin dominance chart, and um, you know, still trying to push up, push it up nicely. Yeah, see that that's the thing. As Bitcoin dominance goes up, this is why Bitcoin will lead the rally. Money is flowing into Bitcoin, into the ETFs, into the IBIT. And not into ETH, uh, ETH or the um, uh, the alts. The alts will generally run later, and uh, and that also. But look at that, all green on the radar for the crypto total market cap on Bitcoin. Bitcoin's the play. I'm overly weighted in Bitcoin here and Sol. So we can also look at Solana and uh, Sol. Now Sol ETH has gone down because ETH is recovering a bit, but uh, Sol ETH had a nice run, still in an uptrend. And uh, so ETH uh, up 3.28%, Solana about 72%. You know, it's languishing a little bit here. I drew this as the likely outcome. We got faked out. The 200-day EMA was that top on Sol. So, you know, let the market come to you. It's all red on the radar. I'm not going to panic sell, but I am expecting sell still for this to hold in this range, mostly because of all of the support it's had through this area. Okay, so uh, anything else you guys uh, want to look at? We can look at some hot movers, and we usually do that. So let's take a look at that, and uh, we'll, of course, look at our basket tomorrow for the M3 Active Trader and all the coins we're watching there. These are my personal list, just skimming through these. Uh, a bit of uh, all over the board, but um, yeah, so let's do this. We'll go over to the, well, two things I want to share with you. We have my liquidity cycle study showing that we are right at the verge of a breakout up to new highs just any month now, probably October, we see that big break. And looking over at some of these other charts. So this is my ETH study chart that I've had up for a while and which scenario seems to be playing out. Okay, these were the different scenarios we thought might happen. Well, this one no longer valid, right? Because this uh, has now come down, the uh, trend channel down, down. So essentially all these areas of interest, these didn't play out, but it's good to have these potential paths that so that when they do start to follow one, you say, all right, well, this is likely what's gonna happen. So at this point, uh, maybe I took one off uh, too soon here because we might be holding in this range. If we do go down to this 2000 range, I'd be buying. Um, but DCA uh, level two, we are right down in there. So uh, this is a good area on ETH to be dollar cost averaging because this is a buy block on this uh, daily time frame.
Uh, if we do drop down on this other DCA level three, I'll get rid of DCA level four just to not have it be too confusing. Uh, then uh, we're in good shape. Actually, let's just do this. We've got DCA one and two. Um, we, either we drop down in that range and bounce or we start pushing up out of this range here. So let's draw this here and just kind of see. That's not what I wanted to do there. I want uh, my drawing tool and let's see. Why is it giving me the error? I was pushing the wrong ones. You know, something like this. That's a terrible arrow. Let me redo that because how you do anything is how you do everything. Perfect. Okay. So we'll watch those scenarios and taking profits at the 3,500 level and also 4,800 to front run that $5,000 price point. On the DXY, what's happened in DXY? It has continued to go down. That's bullish for crypto. Came up, pushed up to this one-on-one -on -one level to retest. I'm going to widen that channel. We are looking like if the DXY starts dropping more, we're down into Bitcoin rally zone, which is going to be great. And as it continues, we have, a, as we know, uh, Bitcoin super rally zone down below somewhere in there. Talk about that more every every week in the uh, M3 class. So looking at uh, the Bitcoin ETF, what happened there? Uh, somehow I got, I was clicking on the wrong chart. Let's see. I want to, I need to pull up the uh, IBIT here. Not sure how that got pulled off. Uh, all right, bear with me. We'll look at the buy IBIT briefly because I've got an interesting study that you can read about on TradingView iShares Bitcoin Trust, that looks like the one. And essentially, yeah, so on the four-hour chart, all of these gaps have filled. Uh, I am going to pull up something, guys, by the way, that you haven't seen, we haven't looked at. That's somewhat ominous on the CME gaps on the one-hour chart. Uh, we'll look at that more tomorrow. But this, we still have an unfilled gap right down in this range. So now this is also interesting, though. We had a, We had a gap here which has filled, okay, with this pump. So we'll turn that to orange, but we have, so the only unfilled gap on this four hour, and these have all filled, you guys. Um, I, I'll, I'll go into this more detail tomorrow in the M3, but um, that would suggest, because this is now filled. And so I'll turn this one, bear with me, uh, as uh, a little bit lighter orange there. Uh, so, so this is a magnet right here, suggesting price should come back down, and the corresponding number on uh, on Bitcoin is around that uh, you know could be fifty k range. So I'm just cleaning up my study here because some of these. Um, why is that not coloring? Sorry, I'm just doing some housekeeping here. So these are all the same. So this filled, this gap filled, this gap filled, this gap filled. All of these have filled since the beginning of uh, the IBIT, okay? So I've been tracking this for since the inception. So the only one that hasn't filled is right down here. This will act as a magnet. I guess that it would, could be a good segue. Uh, normally, we don't look at this here in this class, but because somebody just sent it to me and uh, we had been watching this, so the CME... Chicago Mercantile Exchange similarly has gaps and the, they from time to time, they usually feel like here and here, um, you know, on the four hour chart, I was watching it and didn't see any, but on a one hour chart, uh, the, the, apparently there is a quite a big gap right down here that hasn't filled. Now I see it. Um, if you look at enough time frames that you'll find them, but I, on the one hour chart, I, I don't think it's as, it's not as, it's not as powerful. Okay, but here, 54K has not retested down in this 54K region. Okay, so that's possible. And uh, I believe that's the one he was referring to. And people send me stuff all the time. Uh, a good friend of mine, but that's that's it. So basically, that would coincide with the IBIT gap on the four hour, I guess. And so uh, do we do we have a big sell the news? Do we hit 62K and then dump back down to 54K? It's possible, but, um, and here's what's interesting. Well, this gap just filled here and here. So that's uh, that's no longer a magnet down here, a potential magnet for price. All right, you guys, uh, with that, uh, let's do this. Um, I'm not gonna stay on the CME. We will jump over and do what I wanted to look at originally. Basically, you were gonna look at uh, trading view, uh, hot movers, crypto. I haven't done this in a while. Okay, thank you, Perry.
All right, top gainers on crypto on Trading View. How are we doing on time? We've got about 10 minutes, so we can take a look at these. Uh, one of the uh, beautiful ways to use our signals is come in here, look at the top movers, and see if any of these make sense. I do use a filter of like market cap of at least 50 million. So, um, you know, and I look at sectors that I want to see. This KALM, -A -A I'm not familiar with, seems to have the market cap and the volume. So we'll pull it up and look at our indicators and see uh what we see so it's in a down uh, just a huge downtrend i would uh just immediately not look at this uh the volumes too there's no volume on this it's non-existent so that's out all right what else do we have let's see if we recognize any of these parsic i've heard of um very very low let's see oh well the volume here i looked i was looking at the market cap my bad the last one of course there's no volume four million 31 million on dimension doesn't say what it is um prq parsec parsec i seem to recall let's look at parsec even though it's really thinly traded sometimes we can find some real gems and at least add them to our watch list i can tell from these topping tails it's really low volume and um, uh, a little bit dangerous to trade but we can see right away it's breaking into a new uptrend and if we look at a weekly time frame to make up for the low volume mm, it's okay it's it's not uh not one that i would uh, be looking to to trade necessarily the most bullish thing here is it has a new upper trending channel and appears to have broken up out of the lower one so i mean that alone is a good signal for when you could start buying these 21 day rising above the 50 day but the tsi is a bit overbought here so it should pull back i'm not seeing kind of what i wanted to see as far as uh, let's see the atr is bullish i don't know um it's kind of hard to find though it's on crypto.com and uh, well, it's getting some money flow. That's why, look at that. That's why this, these indicators can be so powerful. The the ERI Pro, these light green boxes are showing money flow. Money flow usually precedes price. So um, you might want to put Parsec on your radar. I believe it uh, it is. It's a smart contract. Is it deep in? It's, it's on one of our lists. And so what would you do here if you wanted to just follow this? You could put alerts in and say, all right, well, uh, I, I want to know about this when it's above 24 cents, maybe 25 cents. You could do an alert like that. That's sometimes how to find these uh, runaway winners. But uh, you have to kind of have your notes and have conviction on what it is if you want to put it in a watch list. But uh, it looks interesting. Originally, I was ready to write it off, but it's, you know, it's in a new uptrending channel. It's got buy block money flow right here. The ATR is green and bullish with an entry zone there. If we did look at a weekly on the trend strength indicator. So I don't know. I, I'm liking this a little bit more for a swing trade. And um, who knows? I mean, it's at 14 cents, 10 cents. It's at 10 cents, you guys. Uh, you know, this is where the indicators really help you say, all right, this is worth paying attention to because it doesn't now look at it doesn't look like much, but this could be possibly 100 or 200 X, right? Because if it goes up to its prior high, that would be a 20 X, 200 X. Sorry, guys, 20 X. My math is off. Just the old highs. Could this go above this in the bull run? Um, yeah, I think that's worthy of some more due diligence. And here it's on uh, Coinbase. So, you know, I don't know. I put it on your watch list if if that makes sense for you. Um, it, it's a little bit thinly traded, though. That's what concerns me. And um, but later on in the bull run, you know, we put an alert already up here. That's what I'm doing with this. I'm saying, I don't think right now because it's just too thinly traded, but if it gets up above here and clears all these sell orders, I'm going to say buy exclamation. That means come back and check it out. So, so you can see how these things can really turn around. You can see I had that channel drawn on the Coinbase chart previously. So it's been on my watch list before. And uh, I'm going to add it to uh, my watch list. We're going to add it to maybe our speculative DGEN watch list. And it's not AI, but our entire retire rich inner circle watch list. Hey, we'll keep an eye on it. Okay. Um, I'm going to hop over and just look at Gala Games for a second. Uh, we're watching those. Not much. Immutable X had a big pump today. Bunch of buy pressure. See, that's another way to use these signals, you guys. Um, without the buy sell blocks... This shows the limit sell orders on the on the exchange. Without them, it can keep you out of trouble because without them, you might say, well, this is breaking out of a parallel trending channel. 
Okay. You might be like, and it's putting in higher lows. That would be my read normally. Look at that. Looks pretty good. But not so good when you layer in these sell orders right in here. How would I play this? I'll look at our other signals. Not very clear. I'll put a buy alert when it can break over some key support resistance, which we can see was back here. Support, support, resistance at $1.70. So I would like to only look at this when it gets back above $1.70 and buy into strength, right? Why look at it? Why watch it when it's got a little sell pressure overhead? Okay. All righty. Uh, a couple other things moving here. A lot of noise, some pump and dumps. Just ignore these. Uh, you know, for, 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 for nothing else, don't go into Coinbase and say, oh, look at this. It's up 20%. I should buy it. I had a friend um, who um, had an inheritance and that was his strategy. Go into Coinbase and he would have FOMO. He would see what was up and he would go and he'd buy it. And sure enough, it would sell off. And uh, he burned through his entire inheritance and um, just quit trading. So, um, not a good, not a good path. These indicators keep you out of trouble. All right, let's see. On the volume side, what do we have on the top movers? We've got uh, these are too thin. A lot of low volume uh, immutable X. We just looked at eighty five billion. Of course, that's a good coin. Celestia. Let's look at Celestia. We've looked at that in the past, and for some reason, isn't on my radar today. And um, so, what do we see here? Anybody? Basically, the radar is mixed, so not looking terribly bullish to me. Uh, we're still in a downtrending channel, rejecting at the 50-day EMA. Overbought on our TSI, you know, so these can also give you signals when not to get in. And on a weekly time frame, not looking terribly good. So, you know, I would not be interested in Celestia at this point. And I would do this kind of a study. But if it can start to turn... You know, it's trying to get above its EMAs. Where do you think we'd kind of like to see it? We talk a lot more about this in the active trader. Be like Wayne Gretzky. Where is price going? Where would we want to buy? Somewhere in here, right? And that's where you'd set alerts. So anyway, uh, Celestia, not really looking good. Um, I, you know, when in doubt, stay out. We don't want to be chasing markets where there isn't a good trade. And uh, I think we should probably hop back and see what Bitcoin's doing. Is it selling off? Is it good? All right, let's see. Volume. Oh, Turbo. Anyone know what Turbo is? I'm familiar with Osmosis. Let's do one more we're not familiar with. Uh, turbo. Uh, it's a meme coin. Um, yeah, no, we're not going to get into these. It's it's super, super micro cap, possibly a, a rug pull. I don't know how old this thing is. We're not going to look at Turbo. Um, pretty impressive on the uh, market cap, though, and the volume today. 123 million. Turbo... Uh, meme coin thingy is uh, more volume than than um, uh, Celestia. No, not as much as Celestia, but more than Immutable X today. Look at that. Uh, Osmosis, let's just see. Let's give us one more good one to look at so I can send you guys off. Uh, but Tensor is just too, it's too highly priced. It's up 10%, no big deal. Not a lot happening in here. And also, wait a minute. These things used to have like strong buy uh well that's on the screener yeah we could do that this is on the top gainers i don't know do you guys want to do the screeners yeah we used to play around with that hold on uniswap hold my beer uh volume 123 million is uniswap finally trying to move you guys it has been dormant and uh quiet but um still a good project just all these swap tokens uh yeah so this is a definite no because our trend strength indicator is red breaking below 80. That's for me as an immediate no. You do not buy that. Uh, we're trying to push up higher here, but I think this has to cycle back down below a bit. I will check the weekly for the... This is where it's a little bit trickier when we have a weekly that uh, is somewhat incongruent and looking to go higher. The weekly will outperform the daily. What this tells me is daily pulls back for a bit, then they go up in sequence. Uh, but mixed signals here, when in doubt, stay out. All right. Well, you know what, guys? Let's do this. And I'm going to hop out of this. We're going to go down into the crypto pair screener. We haven't done this in a while. I want to look at top gainers. Uh, you can Google top gainers in crypto and trading view, and they've already done all this hard work for us. Problem with this is then we have to go through and we have to set up all of these uh, filters. It looks like they've added a bunch that I don't want to see. So... In terms of the oscillators, and I can never find the right uh, button. See, oscillators, well, that's a new tab. Look at there. 
trend following overview is what I want. Uh, sales technical rating. Yeah, that's what I want. That's interesting though. Uh, they have performance oscillators, things like that. So that's kind of new. A lot of noise though we want to get rid of. So what we want to do here uh, is, let's see, uh, this is a lot to look at here, the filters. And that's not it. Hang on, hang on. There's a button in here that's exactly what I needed. For some reason, I can never see it. It's right in front of me. Uh, filters, top gainers, financials. So it's one of these buttons where you can turn these on and off all at one time. Maybe it is filters. Uh, to script your finder where you can turn off the ones you don't want. But that's why I don't use this one anymore because it's darn confusing. Top gainers, financials, the uh, one day download trend following trading panel strategy test or pine editor. They make it too hard. Is this it? Column setup. There it was. I knew it was right in front of me. Change percentage. Yes, uh, the change I'll leave. The exchange. Um, I don't need to know what exchange it is, but we'll manually adjust that. High, low, don't care. Uh, the price a little bit, but volume change. Don't need all of this other stuff. I want technical rating and volume. And uh, there we go. So we've cleared this up quite a bit. And in terms of the exchanges, I only want to see them uh, on certain exchanges, filters, top gainers, column setup, uh, technical rating. Yeah, it's it's this is why I don't use this. It's too too tricky to overview. Where is the button that I normally? I want to show only coins on Coinbase, and it, it weeds out a lot of the noise. But uh, I don't know where they've put it here. So the technical rating is any. Uh, you can sort that. Uh, the button here is that maybe they've hidden it. All right. Well, we'll we'll just do the set again. I'm going to click on technical rating to its strong buy only. Okay. Uh, and we'll just skim for ones we know. Meta, a lot of these are sort of low volume junk coins. Uh, we can do filters on them, but that's why I, I'm reminding myself, that's why I stopped using this. Mutable X, these are a lot of the same ones we already saw. Okay, let's not do that. I knew I didn't want to go there. All right, you guys, uh, that's all we have time for. We're right at 1.30. Any questions here, I will answer these. Um, but uh, if you are here watching this or watching the recording, do go over to moonstream.io and read about our crypto mastery indicators. You can find out about that here. And uh, if you'd like to find out about our pro indicators, it's cryptomastery.org slash pro. These are brand new. Watch this video. I'm going to put it in the chat. You need to have these. If you're trading, if you want to have an edge, I'm telling you, if you're trading with RSIs and MACDs and all the things that everyone else uses, you're using the same lagging indicators everyone else uses. These are predictive indicators. Some have AI built in, certainly have a lot of quant work and many of them, if not all of them, are multiple indicators in one. Using the trade success checklist to look for confluence, you can win as a trader and be con become consistently more profitable. So find out more about this. This is a 30 minute video and tour and you can read all about what the indicators do. Uh, spend some time on this, you guys. You have, you're risking your own money in these markets. And uh, if you're not using these, uh, you're missing out. I didn't show you the crypto scanner, which is a, a trade scanner, which you can program your top favorite eight coins. And uh, it'll tell you when the RSI and signal are both green. Uh, and if they're both green, those are ones to pay attention to. That saves you time going through everything. And we have bonus trainings in the members area, a Facebook group. And uh, and so anyway, you can learn more about that. It's 100% guaranteed. You have 30-day guarantee on these. And you can find out more about that at uh, CryptoMastery.pro, uh, CryptoMastery.org slash pro. And for the M3 Active Trader class, we do a lot more of what we did today, but in more detail with trade recommendations. And you can learn about that on our website also or at moonstream.io slash M3. Uh, now is the time, you guys. Now is the time to be really looking hard at this market, getting ready for October for this next quarter. You know, 2025 is still a wild card. It could be a massive bull run or we could have a massive blow off top here this quarter and a big deflationary bust. Uh, these are both on the table. We cannot accept or cannot expect that this time won't be different and that we'll have the nice orderly big bull run. I don't know that we will. I do know that we'll be trading these swings like uh, ninjas and snipers getting in and out and um making profits uh, in the M3 active trader class. So uh, anyway, one quick, uh, a couple more things here that snuck in. 
from you guys. Uh, Ando, um, I can, I'll pull up Ando uh, for you, Dr. T. Perry says, what about BTC versus alt dominance? BTC versus alt dominance. Uh, I'm not sure what you're looking at there. I mean, if we were going to look at on the total market cap, excluding, um, excluding, I don't think this is what you're asking for, but another way to do it is the total market cap too which is everything but Bitcoin still pushing up. I, I mean, it's trying to break. It's This is a key inflection point, everybody. So this is good. And likely these things do, they often, they do come back and retest. So don't be afraid here. This retest sets us up for the next push higher and higher highs. Okay, so, and then total market three is everything but Bitcoin and ETH. Um, it, there's probably a way to do dominance versus dominance, but there's no point. Uh, there's no point really because uh, Bitcoin dominance essentially tells you that the more Bitcoin dominance goes up, it means that everything else on a percentage basis is going down. You know, we can look at things like Sol dominance and ETH dominance, but the, at this point, there's no point. Um, <laughs> uh, but here we can see that Sol dominance dropping off a cliff right there. ETH dominance also. Why? Money flows into, into Bitcoin as the bull market uh, starts to run. Oh, uh, okay. We talked about the CME gaps. How often do you try to catch? Uh, Perry says, how often do you catch a falling knife? I don't. I do not like to fall. Do not try to catch a falling knife. So <clears throat> the the exception is, the exception is in less, let me find, let me come over to a uh, coin that might exhibit that. So the exception would be something like this on Chainlink. Um, buy block zone down here. If you don't have a key support level, the only time to try to catch a falling knife is when you have a key support level, ideally some buy blocks, and it takes a, a trained eye to see this. But these capitulation sell-offs are when they just drop like a falling knife, right? And they get when they, they get far enough away from the 21-day exponential moving average, the sellers get exhausted, the shorts cover. Now, so this is how it works. You know, the, the guys, this is why shorting can be a lot of fun in the right market. You know, you see, you can trade these, these uh, um, EMAs on the way down. The 50-day EMA rejection, shorted here, cover here, shorted here, cover here. This is what's happening. The shorts are piling in and then they cause this big drop. And I've, I've done this. I've been waiting for this touch point and I put in a big short and it just, it cattle, it's a catalyst and it, and it just steamrolls and then boom. And then we cover our shorts and it drifts higher, you know, and then we kind of let it stabilize and then it gets below the 50 day EMA. This is an hourly, apparently. I didn't realize, but this is, but it's even better. Hourly shorting, this is how you would do it. But when you see, these are the shorts covering. Uh, and when the the buyers are exhausted, the sellers pile in and then boom, they're covering their shorts. Buyers are picking it up from here. Sellers become exhausted. They made money. They're fat and happy. And that's when it recovers. Buyers are in control. But that's tricky business. You've got to have a support level and you got to know what you're doing. Okay. Also on the volume. See how this volume is huge volume on this capitulation drop. Okay. And that would be a sign. That would be a that would be a case. I would put. I would have had buy limit orders right in here, uh, and, uh, and that would have been a great trade. Nine dollars thirty on on Chainlink. So hopefully that answers your question. Uh, let's see. Seems like good. Has um, so low orders can autofill flash crashes. Yep, um, Perry. We did. We've been doing a lot of that, and especially on Sol. We've been doing very well on Sol buying the uh, those support levels that I showed before. Let me move it over. On a daily, um, I you know I've I've bought. Sorry, I'm on the wrong thing. On chain layer, Sol router. I I've been buying this over and over and over again through here. Why? Because it's holding, and uh, so, concept. Perry says you have a lot of watch lists. How often do you go through every coin versus set up alert at first and just wait for them? Yeah, I, I most often set alerts. Um, I'll I'll do both on occasion. Perry, I'll go through my list. So for retire rich, essentially. Um, and those of you who don't know what that is, that is our retire rich inner circle where I recently put out 40 coins and their buy prices in buy block levels. These are the future Amazons and Netflixes for a longer term buy and hold. Active trader, we're swing trading. Retire rich, we're, we're buying into longer term projects that have that potential for 10x, 40x, 50, 100x. And I was giving buy limit orders. Those of you in Retire Rich, you know that. It's in the members area. And uh, 
that's exactly what we're doing. Um, uh, we're, we're setting up, um, we're going through that watch list. I did that together in the video training. We went through the whole in, inner circle watch list and then I was adding alerts on the charts. So that uh, worksheet that's in there, it has specific buy zones, specific take profit zones and stop loss levels for 40 coins, as well as possible upside based on prior highs. Uh, doesn't mean it has to go that far, but it, it gives an, a, an indicator and a, um, what's the word I'm looking for? A, um, <laughs> uh, a sort of a barometer of how high, if the market runs, these are the ones that have the highest potential. And there's a number of them that have 40 X, 50 X potential, a number of those 25 X, and there's one at hundred X potential, I believe in there. And so, um, but I have alerts set on those, a lot of them in that channel, parallel channel breakout. Um, and that's, um, you know, e either by the breakout or the pullback to the buy blocks. But, you know, obviously you need to have the buy blocks to know where that is. And, and that is with the um, indicators there. So again, uh, that order block detector, these are all things you get as part of the M3 Active Trader. And look at this, the screener basically tells us everything we need to know. I would only be buying Bitcoin. Well, I'm sorry, and AVAX and NEAR. Uh, because they're green green um if we wanted to look at uh, avax uh, i can pull that up here in a minute and uh let's see uh now these just they were green a second ago but now avax had a nice pump I, I think we've run out of time we'll talk about this more in the um uh the m3 active trader class but uh but that's essentially what we're watching for what we're doing and so anyway um uh dr t yeah replays will go up in the m3 active trader uh area and if you're if you're just joining here and not in one of our programs we clip these up and put them on youtube but uh it's not the whole video so anyway encourage you to join our community uh if nothing else you guys go over to moonstream.io sign up for some of our free stuff we got a free monthly newsletter on sorry weekly newsletter on mondays and you can sign up for these classes every week the trader success checklist we get our five mistakes crypto investors make and also my past and future for Bitcoin report originally was called Blood in the Streets. Back in December of 2022, I put that out saying, time to buy is when there's blood in the streets. People thought I was crazy, but I was right. Anyway, on that note, everybody, take care. I'll see you tomorrow in the uh, M3 Active Trader class. I'll just, and you get a cool hat when you sign up for Active Trader. Look at there. All right. See you guys.